Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to do an unboxing of Apocalypse Road. It's from Carla and Jeff Horger, the brilliant minds behind Thunder Alley and Grand Prix, and of course, some other games. Uh, those are the two GMT ones I know, which were obviously NASCAR simulation and a uh, Grand Prix racing simulation. Um, now, this is Apocalypse Road. So it is kind of what it sounds like. It's more of a kind of a pseudo Mad Max kind of uh, vibe there, post-apocalyptic post uh, vehicle combat, using some of the same design principles of Thunder Alley and um, um, Grand Prix, but they will um, let you do combat, apparently. So let's crack it open, take a look. It's another heavy one from GMT, big three-inch box. Obviously, it's going to be taken up some, some with the... Uh, the racing, the racetrack boards. If if there are boards, maybe there's not, I don't know. Uh, this is not designed specifically for solo. However, Thunder Alley and Grand Prix were very easy to solo. Um, using a few uh, rule alterations. Wasn't that hard to do, didn't change the game too much. Um, so we'll see how this one works too. Hopefully this will work using the same same general system. So like that's a heavy one. Just shaking the whole table here. So there we go. Alright. Let's take a look at what's inside. First of all, as always, the rules of play. And like the other games, a very thinner thinner book. Uh, this looks like it's going to be about 16 pages maybe. Yeah, 16 pages. Again, full color. Various rules. Um, one thing that's neat there, I already see, is it looks like cars can crisscross. So, get a little demolition derby or stuff going on. So, it's pretty cool. And what you're all looking for is combat. And there it is. So, it's now taking racing and making it a war game. There's a shot of one of the, one of the courses. Right, this is the Eisendarium of Springfield, Ohio. You see that crisscross in there, so that's pretty cool. All right, so 16 page full color rule book. And then we've got our, looks like our team cards here. Race cars. So the team cards have gotten bigger since Thunder Alley. Um, we got eight, eight racers maximum per team, so six, for example, and they've got their weapons, speeds. Uh, noted on them. So we have the Hazleton Mountaineers from Hazleton, Pennsylvania. We've got the Thunder Miners from Lake Erie Canton, Can Lake Erie Canyon. We've got the Extreme Hazard Road Racing Team. The Deadbeats out of Orlando, Florida. The Gelato Division, Ultima Thule, St. Louis, St. St. Mo. The Baguette Bakers. From San Francisco. Ooh, makes me hungry. Archmage Engines out of Baraboo, Wisconsin. If I'm saying any of these wrong, forgive me. Villas Rangers out of Madison, Wisconsin. Two more Pockets Racing out of Tampa, Florida. And the Big D Heroes out of London, England. So there we go. So there's your race teams right there. And of course, what would it be without their race cars? So those come on token sheets here, pre-rounded, ready to punch. Two sheets of those. And a few blanks, I guess, if you want to create your own, maybe. And then we've got our other sheet of counters, markers, things like that. Damaged, reloading. GMT does such a great job of uh, Registration in most cases getting them centered really nice. So when you're playing with them they uh, They look good All right And these are not the pre-rounded kind though, so they'll punch easy, they'll punch easily But then you may want to use a organ laminations 2.5 millimeter quarter rounder the only tool for the job and you will around those and make them kind of neat. 
All right, so now it looks like we're gonna dig into boards here. Ugh, we got one, two tracks. Okay, good, we're down to the cards now. So there are two tracks. The artwork is really nice on these, I have to say. And unlike Thunder Alley, they are, uh, looks like a lot of the tracks are, you know, two spaces. There's, you know, there's some on Thunder Alley that have that too, don't get me wrong, it's just, uh, this seems like a wider, wider type situation. These are gonna be eight panel maps, so they're pretty big. About the same though, as Thunder Alley Grand Prix and the expansions. But the artwork is really awesome on these, as the others are, but this is, gives that more of a apocalyptic feel to it. So this we have Trinite Crater Run in Washington, D.C. Get your sequence of play noted as usual. So you fill your hands, perform action, and then repeat. So it's pretty much the same process as the others. So I'm not going to open these all the way. I'm just going to kind of give you a sneak peek of what you're getting here. Let you see some of the art. So that's that one. It's a double sided. So there's going to be four, four tracks. All right. So we've got the Andover Autodrome out of Andover, Hampshire, England, Hampshire. Right. This is a bigger track. It's paved. The other one was more of a dirt situation. Something called the chute. Don't know what that's about, but I will find out. This one looks fun. And right, so this other side, so the track is dirt, obviously. So that would be Essendarium. It's the one we saw in the rules preview. So it's got the crisscross on it. So very cool. Well, it looks like the chute may be the pits because here's a chute on the side as well. So maybe something similar to pit stopping, fitting. All right, so you're gonna get two boards and you're gonna get your decks of cards. And so what we have here is we have our standard Thunder Alley race deck, which is what the players are going to use to move their cars, line movement, so on and so forth. And then we have combat event cards. And as an example, we have Bump and Run. It says the active car may choose to move one adjacent car front side or rear into a different space. That space must be vacant and adjacent to the targeted car. So that's pretty cool. So there's combat events, but then we also have movement events, which I assume are kind of similar to the events that we already have. Drift, the active car may swap places with a car linked directly in front of it. Now one thing I've noticed is since there's no rules, um, since there's no uh, you know rules like NASCAR would have, there's no um, uh, uh, restarts, things like that, it's just, you know, run and gun kind of thing. So, so you got those cards, and there's also I noticed no um, cars, uh, teams on the bottom for drawing orders. So that must be handled slightly differently. So, anyway, Apocalypse Road just came out. GMT looking awesome. Can't wait to get this one on the table. Um, just real quick, as I you know to play solitaire, I don't know how these are going to factor into it, the event cards. But what I would normally do for for this is every time a team comes up, you would draw three cards and you would use one and put two in the uh, unused pile. So those would cycle through one or two times. And then, so you get every card like through, but you're able to, um, uh, you know, it's easy, it's easy to play when you're not holding cards for certain things. You get your cards in your hand and then go, Okay, what's the best thing for this team to do at that time? So it's like a chip pull, and it works great. It's very easy to use. So anyway, if you get Apocalypse Road, you can get uh, one deck, two stacks of uh, race cards, uh, race deck, and then combat events, movement events. Ooh. 
getting excited about this one. This will be fun. I'm gonna get two very nice double-sided, very heavy-duty mounted track maps of four tracks. One full sheet of markers and counters and two sheets of your cars and all your team boards. I think it was about 10, maybe 12 team boards and 12 page, uh, 16 page rules of play and a big box. That is what comes in Apocalypse Road from Carla and Jeff Horger put out by GMT Games. And I thank you so much for watching. Hope you're doing well. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!